In this video, we will look at G98 multiple parts. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released. What if we needed to punch a part many times on a sheet? In this video, we will be using the code G98 multiple parts to easily repeat a part multiple times on a sheet. In the previous video, we learned to use macros. Using macros, we could repeat lines of G code without retyping them. We also programmed a complete part and repeated the part a second time on the sheet, but because of all the tool changes, it was not very efficient. If you haven't seen the video on macros, click on the link as it is important to understand macros before we continue with this video. The G98 command is used to define a grid of parts on a sheet. It specifies the point of origin of the grid, the interval between the parts, and the number of parts in both the X and Y directions. G98 works in conjunction with G75 and G76. We must use G75 or G76 if we use G98, and the opposite is true as well. Let's take a closer look at how all this works. Let's say we have a part that we need to punch multiple times on a sheet. We calculate that we can fit a grid of 4 parts in the X direction by 3 parts in the Y direction, which will make a total of 12 parts on the sheet. We take into account that we need to leave some space at the bottom so we don't punch the clamps. We also need to leave material around the edges of the sheet and we also want to leave material in between the parts. So when we calculate all this, we end up with a plan like this. Now let's look at the parameters of G98. The X and Y refer to the reference point for the bottom left hand corner of the part. In essence, it's like a G93 origin offset built into G98. The I is the distance from one part to the next in the X direction. This includes space for punching the exterior of the part and the material in between the parts. The J is the distance from one part to the next in the Y direction. Again, this includes space for punching the exterior of the part and the material left in between parts. The P is the number of parts in the X direction, excluding the first part. The K is the number of parts in the Y direction, excluding the first part. For this example, we would have G98, X1, Y3, I8, J5, P3, K2. Keep in mind that the P and K are quantities of parts and not measurements, so those numbers must not have decimal points. This G98 line tells the control that the first part will be located at X1, Y3. The parts will be spaced apart by 8 inches in the X and 5 inches in the Y, and there will be a grid of 4 parts in the X and 3 parts in the Y, for a total of 12 parts. We have not programmed the part yet. This will be done using macros. We will then use the G75 or G76 codes to recall the macros on all the parts on the sheet, as defined in the G98 line. Let's go to our punch sim software and look at an example. Here we see a part drawing and the program for that part. There are different styles of multiple part programs. Let's analyze this basic version of the program, which is the most common type of multiple part program. We see that we have five different tools to punch this part. The G98 defined here places the first part at X1, Y4. We know the part is 6 inches by 9 inches. The I in the G98 is 6.75. This is because the part is 6 inches. Then we need to add 0.25 for the tool, another 0.25 of material, and another 0.25 for the tool of the next part. The same for the J, 9.75 from the first part to the second part in the Y direction. We have a P5 and K3 for the number of additional parts in X and Y. Next we have the grid of holes in a macro. Then the circle of holes in another macro. The single square hit in its own macro. 
the rectangle for punching horizontally the bottom and top of the part in a macro. Finally, the tool for punching vertically both sides of the part in the last macro. The next line is G75W1Q4. Let's see what that does. Basically, the G75 and G76 codes are used to punch the macros in memory on all the parts on the sheet, as defined by the G98 command. G75 will start punching the parts in the X direction, and G76 will start punching the parts in the Y direction. The W defines which macro number we want to punch, and the Q defines which quadrant to start with. Each corner of the grid we define in G98 is called a quadrant. We can start punching a macro from whichever quadrant we choose. So in the case of G75W1Q4, we are telling the control to punch macro 1 all over the sheet as defined in the G98 line, starting by the top right corner of the sheet. When this line is finished, what is in macro 1 will be punched on all the parts on the sheet. The next line is G75W2Q2. This line will punch macro 2 on all the parts on the sheet starting by quadrant 2, or the bottom right of the sheet. We chose 2 because macro 1 will finish punching at this quadrant. The rest of the G75 lines work in the same manner. We could have used G76 and the punching would have been done in the Y direction instead of the X for each macro. We can also mix both G75 and G76 in the same program if we prefer. When programming a multiple part in this manner, some controls allow you to punch the first part only at the bottom left of the sheet. When this mode is activated on the control, the machine will punch the first part only so you can inspect the part before punching the rest of the sheet. You can then activate the mode to punch the rest of the sheet and the control will skip the first part, since it's already punched, and punch the remaining parts on the sheet. Before proceeding with the remaining sheets, you can activate the normal mode, so all the parts on the sheet will be punched. The important part to understand is that we really programmed only one part. We separated the tools used by putting them in separate macros. This way we punch everything there is to punch with each tool before changing tool station. This makes the program more efficient, but still keeps it relatively small, which makes it easy to understand and modify if any changes are needed. Please note that if you are programming only one row or one column of parts, then you are limited to either G75 or G76, and you are also limited on the choice of quadrants. If you only have one row of parts, you can only use G75 because there are no parts in the Y direction. Also, only quadrants 1 and 2 are available as choices. If you only have one column of parts, you can only use G76 because there are no parts in the X direction. In that case, the only choices of quadrants are 1 and 3. Now let's take it a step further. The previous G-code program we looked at was the standard multiple part program. The parts are held in by micro joints and there is material in between the parts. Since this part is rectangular, it would be a good part to consider common line punching. In other words, leave no material in between parts. We could save material and also save punching time by punching only once in between parts to separate them. That would mean that the spacing in between parts would be 6.25 instead of 6.75 in the X direction and 9.25 instead of 9.75 in the Y direction. Let's examine this type of program in the PunchSim software. If you want more info on the PunchSim software, click on the link to visit cncsoft.com. What we have done is change the G98. I and J are changed to reflect a shorter distance between parts. Then we have the macros that punch the interior of the part. We recall each macro so they are punched all over the sheet. Then we define a new G98. This is because we punch only the bottom of the part and pretend that that one line of punching is a new part. We will ask for that line of punching to be punched one extra time in the Y direction so the K is changed to 4. This will punch the top row of all the parts. The macro punching the bottom of the part is also recalled all over the sheet using G75. 
We then do the same with the left side of the part. We define a new G98, P is changed to 6, and K back to 3. Each time we define a G98, it replaces the previous G98, and it will stay active until another G98 is defined, or G50. Then we punch the left side of the part, and we recall that macro all over the sheet using G75. Let's simulate and see the result. In this style of multiple part, all that is holding the parts together is the outer edge of the sheet and the small tabs in the corners of each part. This can be very risky as the parts may detach before all the punching on the sheet is complete. The rigidity of the sheet will be dependent on the thickness of material, the micro joint sizes, part sizes, etc. Also, note that with this type of program, you cannot ask the control to punch just the first part because the part would not be completely punched. The top and the right side hits would be missing. Another factor is that some parts will not have the geometry which can be used with common line punching. Our example part is rectangular, so we can choose to program it common line punching or not. Sometimes common line punching is not an option. Using common line punching will create a program with faster runtime. There will be less tool wear because there are less hits. Also, since we are saving space in between parts, we may be able to fit more parts on the sheet. You will have to judge if the risk is worth the reward when deciding whether or not to program multiple parts using common line punching. Is using G98 the most efficient way to punch multiple parts? Of course not. It's always a trade-off between how much time you wish to spend programming as opposed to how much time do you want to save on the machine. G-Code is a language and you can be very creative if you spend time on it. There are different factors to consider. How easily modifiable do you want the program to be in case there are changes to be made in the future? How much free memory do you have in your control? Some CAD CAM systems can produce very efficient programs very quickly, but they are usually very big, complicated, and not meant to be read or modified. There are many considerations to be taken into account, and each shop has different needs. You decide what is best for you. That's it for G98 Multiple Parts. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or email us directly at support at cncsoft.com. See you soon in the next video as we continue our punch programming course series. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released.